For the greater part of my life, I have earned my living as an artist. Like the Renaissance artists before me, I am a man of many parts. Painter, sculptor, engineer, architect and craftsman. And like the artisans from the past, I have learned my trade at the workbench. I have never spent a day in art school. My talent for art was first recognised by my primary school teacher. She had asked the class to paint a picture of the Queen's coronation coach. And by the time the school bell rang, she had 34 paintings of the Queen's coach. The 35th painting was of a crowd of spectators, all trying to catch a glimpse of the coach. But rather than chastising me for not painting what I had been told, she predicted that one day I would be an artist. Although my school report placed me at the bottom of the class, Miss Atak considered my flair for art was worthy of encouragement. The fact that I was eventually able to excel in all subjects is thanks to my secondary school headmistress. She diagnosed dyslexia before the term came into common usage. I was no longer perceived as dumb, but different. Just as Leonardo da Vinci, Auguste Rodin, Pablo Picasso and Albert Einstein were dyslexic and different. Research has shown that 20% of students are dyslexic and that 40% of all students are creatively rather than academically inclined. Exams and intelligence tests cannot measure creative potential. A creative answer is marked as naught. In essence, creativity is something different to what has gone before. We are born with 98% the creative potential of genius. But as we go through life, that figure falls dramatically. At the age of 8, the percentage has dropped to 32%. By the time we reach 13, peer pressure has brought it down to 10%. And by adulthood, conformity has reduced it to less than 2%. After leaving school at the age of 15, I served an engineering apprenticeship. And it was not until I was in my mid-twenties that I declared myself as an artist on the pavements of France. What follows is my attempt to put the passion back into art. The sketches that I sold as songs for my supper on the pavements of France were line drawings. They were made with either pencil, ballpoint pen, ink, charcoal pencil, conte crayon, or sticks of natural charcoal. For the still life demonstration that follows, I will be sketching on a sheet of newsprint paper with a stick of charcoal. I have limited the composition to a couple of oranges, a grapefruit and a banana. But whatever my subject, be it the figure, a portrait or a landscape, I always work from life. When working from life, I can scent the subject and view it from all angles. I find it impossible to enthuse life into a drawing or a painting by copying from a photograph. When working from life, speed is of the essence. Although a still life may stay still, a figure never stays still for more than a second. And outdoors, the light and shadows are constantly changing. This video footage is captured in real time. And for this sketch, the time from start to finish was two minutes. But it would be true to say that it has taken me a lifetime to learn to say what I have to say in a matter of seconds. Working from life is good practice. It can be done without the critical comments of passers-by. Once, when I was sketching a crowded street scene, 
a young lad said to his mate, Hey, my dad can draw better than that. The secret is to keep your eye on the subject, with only a glance at what your hand puts down on paper. I have only one rule for those attending my life class, that is, no erasers. In sketching, as in life, every moment counts, mistakes and all. There is no turn in the clock back. Hidden in a confusion of wrong lines is the right line. When I find it, I firm it up, and the wrong lines remain to emphasise that I have figured it out. Sometimes I leave the viewer to determine which line is the right line. Thus, I invite the viewer to have a say in the creative process. A multiple of lines gives testimony to the struggle one faces when working from life. Right lines and wrong lines, all lines count. There's no rubbing out. In the next video, I will paint the same still life in watercolour and give you more insights into my way of working and painting.